you're a woman, you can't be a pastor. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Am I wearing literally the same outfit as every other video? Yes, but do I care? Not really. Hi. I don't think you're going to hell if you wear a crop top. I all Christians are actually hypocrites. Currently, I'm in my friend Talitha's room. If you haven't met Talitha, she's been in a couple videos. I'll link them down below. She moved to LA to do the Lord's work, and I'm moving in to do the Lord's work, taking her spot, but then she's coming back. It's like only a temporary thing, but it's fun because I'm living with Courtney and Erilyn. If you haven't seen the videos with them, go check them out so you can actually know what I'm talking about. And if you're new to this channel, like, hey, sorry about this little whiplash effect about locations, about Talitha, Courtney, Erilyn, all these names. It's not important for this video. I just wanted to update whoever cared. I don't know where to sit. No idea where to sit. Maybe I should... Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about... You can do like orange, white, blue. Also, the lighting's not the greatest, but we're going to ignore that. Hey guys, what is up? It is Katie Patty, and today we're just gonna do a random faith q and A. I I put on my story yesterday a whole bunch of questions, a whole bunch of polls, kind of just asking you guys where you're at, what you struggle with, the random faith Q&A, all the stuff that I'm gonna use for future and use for reference, just how I can do better with my platform, how I can do better to help you guys. And so I also put in there a random faith Q&A, so I'm gonna be answering some of the questions today. All different topics. There's not really one topic that we're talking about today or one specific topic, like how I usually have done in the past. They're all random, they're all good questions they are all great questions so yeah I'm excited about today's video if you're new here hey welcome to my channel if you're back I'm surprised you're back but I'm really glad you're back don't forget to go follow my Instagram and TikTok at katie.patty with two eyes on each side because there you can join in those polls and you can you can join in those polls Take it out of context, that could look really bad. Could join in in the question things and you can ask me some questions and you can do stuff like that. So go get your butt over there and go follow, go like, go also subscribe to this channel. Turn on that bell notification. Let's get on this journey guys. Join the Katie Patty fam and let's get right on into the video. First question is what preachers do you recommend? Now I have like a top three list. Great pastors that I actually listen to regularly and I've listened to a lot of pastors. I listen to a lot of different styles. I literally a year ago, I went on this false teaching preacher journey of like who's a false teacher who's not and honestly kind of bad kind of fell into pride but we're gonna talk about that in another video but right now I'm just gonna tell you my favorite pastors that I have seen first number one top number one is Matt Chandler if you haven't checked out Matt Chandler's videos church or sermons or anything you should definitely watch him he's just such a man of God and he delivers such truth and love and he doesn't sugarcoat anything but he doesn't look like a jerk and like he's just a great pastor he's from the village church Church in Texas and I absolutely love his series did a series I think it was called beautifully designed and it went on the roles of women roles of men identity all this stuff and you no know, a lot of people when taking on that topic can come across sexist or rude or, or misogynistic or like things like that but he did not come across like that at all great he just delivered biblical truth and love really just laid it out I really love Matt Chandler second one is Mark Clark and Mark Clark is actually from the from Canada where I'm from and it's the village church in Canada I love Mark Clark He's great. He's really good like a theology buff. He's really knowledgeable really like him I read lots of his books and then the third one is John Mark Comer I I love his books I love how he is just like so personal and so emotional yet He still like, teaches truth and love those are like probably my top three pastors that I absolutely love and listen to on the regular basis Honorable mentions would be like Paul Washer R.C. Sproul I learned a lot of theology from them when I was studying like more reformed theology and stuff I actually really liked they're preaching and stuff but yeah next question is thoughts on secondary issues aka women preaching gifts things like that this is my kind of no nuance November like you know when that was a thing on TikTok. like this is no nuance okay I don't care what your secondary doctrines issues are I don't care if you believe women should be pastors or if you don't if you believe gifts are well and alive or you don't I think there's secondary issues the thing that Christianity has to all agree on is fundamental doctrines okay so like Jesus rising from the dead like Jesus like and who Jesus actually is who God actually is the gospel like it's like sin we all have to have agreements of that okay the secondary doctrines like women pastors gifts oh like Calvinism Armenianism like theology issues like in that regard that aren't 
a salvation issue I don't care and like that's probably like what you don't care what no but there's so many denominational divides secondary issues divide people so much like they really do like secondary issues when you are a diehard secondary issue theology buff like you can become very prideful you can have a big ego on both spectrum whether you're very very reformed or you're very very Pentecostal or you whatever both ends of the spectrum can get prideful and have an ego if they're not willing to like to see the other side and not have a bias honestly I love theology I genuinely love looking into Calvinism I love reformed theology I love like looking at the debate of Calvinism Armenianism of like women pastors of like gifts like I love looking into theology it's my favorite thing ever but I will never ever say I'm right all the time I'm not God you're not God like RC Sproul Paul Washer, not God. John Calvin, not God. I probably lost a lot of you when I saw all those names. Like they're just big theology people. Saying that we're right 100% without having any change, willingness to change, willingness to learn and grow is bad. So honestly, secondary doctrine, don't be a diehard because I've met those and they suck. And so I will never want to be those. I will want to continue and learn and I will have my own theological interpretation. And when people ask me about it, I'll tell them, but like I won't just go up to them and be like, oh, you're a woman, you can't be a pastor. Like, I would never... <laughs> Another thing is when you're looking into theology, when you're looking into like what your interpretation is and like context and stuff, you can't just take a verse out of context and you can't just take it how it is. I know a lot of people use verse in, I think it's First Timothy about women pastors and everything like that. I'm not saying if I think they should be pastors or not, I'm not starting that debate. But all I'm saying is, is like look at context with whatever, gifts, Calvinism, women pastors, like theological issues of free will. Don't just take a verse and run with it. Like look into the context look what Paul or whoever the author was was saying enduring word commentaries look at different sides don't just look at one Pentecostal side like look at the other side too and don't be biased on it because honestly when you're biased it comes out a lot in your theological principles oh hello hey, I'm talking about women pastors right now we have completely different theological views sometimes. We actually like, so. don't have them that different. Sometimes. Okay, here's the thing. We think, and this is actually true for like a lot of Christians. We both think that it's so different, but then when we get, they're both the Bible basics. based. Yeah. Like we read the Bible and we say this is what we believe. So when we get down to it, we're like, oh, we actually have similar beliefs. But also fun fact is like you can be friends with people who have different theological views than you. You can be friends with people who have lots of different views. You can be friends with someone that has gay dads. We can. Whoa. Imagine. No nuance November. Like the Bible says we are the church. Okay, so women should be silent everywhere. Like you can't just take the Bible at face value like that. You can't, but here's the thing. You also need to take the Bible at face value. So it is confusing. And that's why theology is a whole four year degree. <laughs> no, it's a whole lifetime it's degree. It's a whole lifetime. My favorite woman pastor, nobody asked, is Bianca Olta. She's uh, at Father's house in Orange County. So she's the one that says like, he's like, oh honey, he's hot. Mm. So it's hell. <laughs> like word, things I need to remind myself when I see a hot boy. I actually am trying not to get into the bay of women pastors or not. I said secondary issues don't matter. That's what I said. That's all what I said. I didn't say my interpretation. So me, like being alive is really a secondary issue. <laughs> so as you can tell, one of us is the problematic one and one of us isn't. Just, I think fundamental doctrines need to be the same. Set, good, yes, salvation issue. But secondary doctrines, like I don't care if you believe in gifts. I don't care if you believe women are pastors or not. Unless you're gonna marry. Oh, that's another thing! Cute. It is vital that you have the same same views theologically as Theological the person you're gonna marry. Or like that you're dating because like, yeah. you know, it's dating to marry. Like not, maybe not the exact same, but if you, he believes that women and men are like equal and can do everything equal and blah, blah, blah. And you believe that there's roles, but that they are still equal, but that different, they have different roles. How is that gonna work in a marriage? That is facts, but not with everything. Like as men can believe in predestination, for example, and you cannot believe in it. Yeah. And I think you can make that work. Yeah. But if they're like, so Silence, woman! And you're like, well, if they say silence, woman, I think you should dump. <laughs> if he's like, we walk through those church doors, silence. Misogynistic men. <clears throat> So the next question is, is what do I do if I backslided after I have been saved? So you've been saved, you fell into sin again, you keep going into repetitive sin. What I'm gonna tell you is the best quote I've ever heard and it's like, Christianity is like a race kind of, right? You run a race, right? And you fail and you fall, whatever. You don't just go back to the starting line. You get up and you keep running. Think of that in your faith. Like when you fail, you don't just go back to the start and try to redo your relationship with God. It's like God's not asked to have a perfect relationship with him or like you have to clean yourself up. 
up before having a relationship with him or coming to him. He's just asking you to be in a relationship with him. Not a perfect one, not a clean one, but just a relationship with him. Yes, you've backslided and like sin is never okay and it's never okay to abuse God's grace and love. But also remember that you're human. You need to give yourself grace. Jesus gives you grace. Like repent, talk to him, continue to build your relationship with him and to just help you grow. And how you do that is you run to him right after you sin. Adam and Eve, when they sinned and they ate from the tree, they hid from God. Don't be like Adam and Eve. But even if you hid, God's ready to clothe you. Like that's literally the next thing that God did was clothe them from their shame. And so just remember that God loves you, adores you, and you're still saved even if you messed up and even if you sinned. None of us are perfect, so just continue to fight the good to fight. Literally read your Bible, pray to him, talk to him, everything like that because those things are so important to just keep running the race, keep fighting the good fight. So next question is what's your view on how Christians should dress? Now I know modesty is a topic that's kind of talked a lot about on like at least Christian talk, TikTok, but not necessarily the church or anything. And I even made a couple, I think I made one modesty video here and a couple on my TikTok. And all I gotta say is modesty is not just about your clothes, it is about your heart posture too and where you're finding your worth, your attention, your validation from. So modesty applies to both guys and girls and I'm just gonna give you a little TED talk summary of what I said in my modesty video. I'll put it down below. It just remember where your heart's at. If you're wearing something and it's because it's for a boy, it's because it's for attention, it's because you're seeking validation from other people, like check your heart and make sure that what you're wearing isn't for other people, but it's literally for God and glorifying and honoring to God because literally in the Bible it says how everything that we should do should be honoring and glorifying to God. It also says that we should be set apart. I don't think you're going to hell if you wear a crop top. I literally wear a crop top or I know some people say you can't even wear pants but just remember remembering to guard your heart, guard other people's hearts and just ask yourself am I doing this for attention or am I doing this because I think it looks good on me and I know it honors and glorifies God through my clothing and his design for my body, his design for other people and everything like that if that makes sense. How to incorporate Jesus into friendships with non-Christians. So what I would ask you is how are you loving them? How are you showing them grace? How are you showing them vengeance is Jesus's, not ours? Like how are you living like Christ daily? So just showing them that you are set apart. So say like you got in a fight with your friend and other people who are not Christians wouldn't give them grace and would just like cut them off and cancel them. But you, you're showing them grace. You're loving them. You're forgiving them. How are you different from them? So to incorporate Jesus into your friendship like that is just being noticeably different. Also, I, I do this with my non-Christian friends all the time is just asking them how I can pray for them. And like not every single day or annoying them or everything like that, but like, they're sad saying they're talking about their friend, uh, their boyfriend's bad situation, toxic, whatever. It's so simple to just ask them like, hey, I'm a Christian, so I really believe in God and I believe that God changes circumstances and I believe God is sovereign and he has power. So like, how can I pray for you? Because I wanna talk to my God about you. I wanna talk to God about your situation. So how can I pray for you? Or can I pray for you and you pray for them? Just So just little things like that. Or like even inviting them to church. But again, like just building that relationship first, building that trust. Overall summary is love them, be set apart, or ask them what you can do to pray for them. So yeah. So someone asked, how can I stop being a hypocrite? So newsflash is all Christians are actually hypocrites. All of us, because we're not perfect. We always preach something that we don't necessarily practice 100% of the time. And that's because we're not Jesus. Unbelievers are hypocrites all the time too. They preach things that they don't practice too, even if it's not in a religious way, whether that's a political party, whether that's a stance, whether that's a viewpoint or something like that. Everyone in this life is a hypocrite. All of us are not perfect and all of us will fail and fall. So no, we should not use and abuse God's grace. We should not just take that and run with it. And we should be actively repenting and building our relationship with God but knowing that there is grace for us knowing that we do live in a sinful world and we will make mistakes but the main thing is like what do you do after the mistakes do you hide and be like Adam and Eve in the garden or do you run to Jesus do you grow your relationship with him so after you fall into sin I want to challenge you to first pray talk to God. Do not run away. First, talk to God. When you feel like a hypocrite, talk to God. When you feel happy, talk to God. When you feel sad, talk to God. Just continually build your relationship with him and talk to him because he wants to talk to you and communicate with you. If you haven't seen how to hear God's voice, I'll put it down below because it's so important to actually tune your ears to actually hear God in those moments when you do feel like a hypocrite. I'm a hypocrite. Sadie Robertson's a hypocrite. All of us are hypocrites because we all suck sometimes and we all fail and fall. But Jesus, he loves us despite our hypocrisy. He he loves us and gives us grace despite that. So just continue to fight the good fight. That's like the common theme of this video, just 
continue to fight the good fight. So that was my video guys, a little short, cute, random Q&A, faith Q&A video. I hope you enjoyed, I love you guys, and I'm praying for you always, and I really hope this helped. So I will see you on Friday when we discuss a very spicy topic that I'm very excited to talk about, but that'll be Friday. So definitely go check that video when it comes out, and if it's if you're seeing this when it's already out, uh, go watch that right now, because it was a good video, and I'm so excited to post that. So love you all, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.